Hey everybody, Jazzy here, and January 10th was a red letter day for Don't Starve. The reason being the release of the long-anticipated quality of life update, which among other things added some much requested content from Don't Starve together into the single player game. So let's review all of the changes and additions that this update means for us. I've arranged these in order of importance, starting with the content that I feel will be most significant. The first and indisputably most significant addition to the game is bundling wraps. That's right, you can now store all your perishables inside of these wraps, and they will never ever spoil. In order to craft a bundling wrap, you will need to acquire the blueprint, which is now a 4% drop from bees and killer bees. If you are playing Hamlet, the blueprint is also a guaranteed drop from the queen womb ant, and the honeycombs needed to craft wax paper can be collected by hammering the ant comb homes inside the mant hill. Now, from what I've seen on the Clay and Reddit forums, this edition seems to be the most controversial and divisive. On one side, you have players who are thrilled to see this game-changing item find its way over to single player, and on the other side, you have the argument that bundling wraps were already overpowered in DST and just make the game too easy with the ability to stockpile massive supplies of food. Now, personally, I say use them if you want to, but nobody will hold it against you if you decide not to world hop multiple times just to amass a trove of beeswax for your bee boxes and bundling wraps. Next up, beefalo domestication. Were you waiting so long to have your very own smelly pet monstrosity in your reign of giants world? Well, it's your lucky day. You can now tame, ride, and eventually domesticate beefalo. Along with this new feature comes the assortment of saddles and tools such as the brush and saddle horn. Unfortunately, salt licks have not yet been added, which is disappointing as they are needed to keep your beefalo's domestication level from going down if you don't plan on riding and feeding it every day once they're domesticated. So for most players, that will be a deal breaker in terms of the feasibility of domesticating. But even that obstacle might be completely moot. This feature doesn't seem to be working as intended, because I failed miserably at every attempt to mount a beefalo. After being fed sufficiently, they would either attack me when I attempted to saddle them, or allowed me to saddle them only to buck when I attempted to mount them. So a few bugs to work out here, but I'm sure Clay will be on top of it. Now, in order to craft a brush and war saddle, you will need steel wool. Good news! The Iwakis has also been added as a potential spawn at the end of Suspicious Piles. Hooray? The phlegm animation is a little glitchy, but otherwise things seem to be working as expected with this little booger. Moving along, say goodbye to those smackable grass walls for your pens and farms. You can now build fences and gates! The only bummer with the doors is the character door opening animation has yet to be added to single player, so every time you open a door you go through the collecting animation, which probably takes more time than smacking a hay wall. Still, in terms of aesthetics, they give your enclosures a much more open wilderness feel and less like a military encampment. So for now, they are a much welcome addition. And speaking of goodbyes, say goodbye to Infinite Lanterns. That's right, the one bug that Clay has not touched until now. Before this update, you could place a lantern on the ground, re-log, and it turns into an infinite light source. Many a mega base went dark tonight. Here's hoping we can get lamp posts in Reign of Giants and shipwrecked. Otherwise, it's back to fire pits and pig torch set pieces for us. But hey, mini signs and feather pencils are here. Thank God, finally something to do with all those crow feathers. No more dropping items in front of your chest to label them. And that wasn't even an option with stuff like pig skins that mobs might eat off the ground or in shipwreck with items that could blow away. The action key has also been modified in this update to more closely function like it does in DST. You are now able to use the action key while holding an item with your mouse cursor, where before you had to drop the item before you could perform actions. For example, you can now mine and chop away while holding something with your cursor. There was mention in the update about the action key regarding trap pickup. I'm not sure if anything has actually changed with regard to that. In DST, you can hold down action button around tooth traps, and your character will reset any sprung traps and pick up loot. Before this update, in regular Don't Starve, holding the action button down would pick up the tooth traps, which makes less sense. So now the action button will not do this, but it also doesn't seem to be doing much of anything around tooth traps. It won't even detect items on the ground if they are close to traps, so this feature might be a work in progress. Another change that I am personally very excited about is the changes to the color schemes in Hamlet. Seasonal tints have been tweaked, and hey cool, blue claw palm trees. 
It's a very welcome addition to the DLC that already seems to me like the most strikingly vibrant and colorful DLC in the franchise, and it leaves no question that Clay has some real artists on their development team who really care about the game not only functioning properly, but also looking good. Another Hamlet addition was the improvement of controller support when decorating and interacting with interiors. I don't use a controller, so I will leave it to you to provide feedback on that improvement. All in all, this update is pretty substantial, and some of the big changes will potentially affect gameplay on a fundamental level. I am thankful that Clay finally took it upon themselves to port over some of these improvements back to the base game. As long as they plan on developing DLCs for the single player, might as well benefit from everything they improved upon in DST. Glad you finally took our advice. Now how about that range check on our place flingomatics and sprinklers? That's it for this video. Please like slash sub if you found it useful and write in the comments what you've discovered with the new update. Thanks, and see you next time!